Hello and Happy Easter to you. Now, before you look at me like I'm a few words short of a sermon, it's important for you to know that this is the Northern Illinois Cabinet Easter Tide Worship Service. Easter Tide is a 50-day celebration of the season of Easter. It's a time where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and the transformation of the wor world and the salvation of our souls. So there are 50 days to celebrate this moment of resurrection, 50 days to give thanks to Jesus, and 50 days to get some of those chocolate Easter bunnies in as well. This worship service is designed to be a time to give rest and, uh, and thanksgiving to the pastors, the office staff, the church administrators, worship team leaders, and video uh, worship leaders throughout our conference that have been working so hard during this pandemic to provide worship online for so many people. We hope that this is a chance for you all to breathe, to worship, and to be filled once again with the Holy Spirit and all of that rejuvenating power that comes with God. So you might continue in your ministries to reach other people, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thank you once again for joining us today. We hope that this is a meaningful worship experience for you, that you can feel the power of God uh, with us in prayer and song and proclamation of the word, and that you might leave transformed so that you might change the world. Let us now begin our worship together with a call to worship. Let us pray. God will resurrection as you appear to his disciples to help them to believe in you. I pray for your presence in our lives as well. Give us a hope in you in the midst of uncertain future. Give us a courage to risk new possibilities in a new normal. Give us a grace so that we can embrace every day as a brand new day. Give us your love so that we can open our hearts and mind to praise you through this worship. Give us a confidence in you and assurance that you are more than enough, that the gifts you have given us are more than enough for our ministries, and that the people of your church, the UMC, are more than enough to serve your will faithfully. Continue to overwhelm us with your abundance, overcome our fear and sense of scarcity. Lead us to fruitfulness. We pray in the name of a resurrected your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amid the flood 
there's no thanks to them abide the spirit and the gifts are ours to him who with us side let Everybody. As we continue our cabinet Eastertide worship, it's time for children's moments. Remember, children's time is for the young and the young at heart, so don't go away. Today, during our worship, we're thinking about those times when we meet Jesus. We meet Jesus when we're happy, and sometimes we meet Jesus when we're sad. This has been a pretty hard year. When was a time that you were sad this year? I was sad because I couldn't hug my family. I was sad when there was so much snow that it was hard to move around outside. But if you like snow, maybe you were happy. I was sad when we couldn't have a big Easter dinner, but yet Jesus was there. When are you happy? I am happy when I read a good book. This is the story of Luis and Mia and how Mia becomes Luis's friend when he starts school and knows nobody. Or maybe you're happy when you hug your favorite stuffed animal. This is Sprinkles and she makes me happy and reminds me that Jesus is with me. Or maybe you're happy when you have your favorite dessert, mm, a bowl of ice cream. We have Jesus with us. Whether we're happy or we're sad. And today, as we celebrate Eastertide, we remember God's promise that Jesus is with us always. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we're so grateful that you walk with us when we are happy and that you surround us with your love when we are sad. Thank you for the story of Easter, for the promise of Jesus, and for all those times when we experience you. Amen. Good morning. I hope you have your Bibles with you today. As we turn to the Gospel of John, Chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Hear the reading of the gospel lesson for today. Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Gal Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat, but throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, no. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. 
And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped him, his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took some bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is a joy to share a message with you in these days after Easter. We can still proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's a beautiful phrase, isn't it? On Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, we proclaim Jesus' victory over sin and death. No longer are we full of sorrow and without hope. Now we are forgiven and free. Jesus has acted on our behalf. Jesus is our Savior. In the days following Easter, we are disciples who are becoming apostles to share the good news in our words and deeds. We have an identity and a mission. We act on behalf of our Lord Jesus. Jesus is our Lord. That is why we say Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He saves us in our brokenness so we can serve him in our blessedness. I have discovered that God comes to us when we are broken and when we are blessed. Jesus came to me in the Lenten season of my sixth grade year. I was broken with fear and homesickness. My father was out of a job and we had no home. I was living with relatives and I did not know when my family would be back together. I was lost not knowing what the future would hold. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a miracle occurred to me in the middle of a Sunday evening worship service when I recognized the presence of Christ in my life. At that moment, I was made whole in my brokenness. I was saved from my fear, doubt, and disappointment and claimed a blessed assurance that God was real. Yes, Jesus comes to us when we're broken. In fact, most people, when they share their faith stories, talk about a time when they were broken, lost, and headed in the wrong direction. And many sermons tell stories of how Jesus can forgive us, heal us, mend us, take care of our relationships, and save us when we receive him into our life. And yet, knowing what Christ has done for us is not enough. Jesus also comes to us when we are blessed, when we are filled overflowing with beauty and love and gratitude and meaningful relationships. That happened to me in the summer after my ninth grade year at Central High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It was at Epworth Forest Church Camp in the North Indiana Conference only a couple of summers after I rejoined my family. I matured early in my sixth grade experience and I put everything into school. My first year of high school was amazing. I was starting quarterback on the ninth grade football team. I had a lead in the freshman class play. I was a member of the honor roll. And best of all, I was dating the future homecoming queen. Life was good. I was blessed. By the time I arrived at church camp, they call it Senior High Institute, I was blessed and grateful for being back with my family and being affirmed in so many ways. Like most camps, the week was full of activity, sports, Bible study, preaching, skits, singing fun. The camp also had a, a, a singing group and a, a drama troupe where those people served as role models for us. 
Thursday was commitment night and following an amazing service that reminded us about how much God loved us, we made a vow of silence. And for an hour, I walked and prayed around that campus and watched other students. Then we returned to the auditorium for a time of commitment and holy communion. When the invitation came to give our lives to Jesus Christ, it was not only to be a pastor or a missionary, although those were things to be considered, it was to make a commitment to follow Jesus wherever he leads you, to lean on him, to trust him, and to give your all for him. And I remember having a lump in my throat and tears in my eyes as I stood up from my seat and made my way to the altar. I knelt before God not because I was broken, but because I was so blessed, I wanted to be a blessing to others. I did not decide to be a pastor until after college, but I knew Jesus had acted on my half. Have, and I wanted to serve him and act on his behalf and live for others. Have you ever recognized Jesus in your abundance when your life was full, when you were blessed? In our scripture, the disciples did not recognize Jesus until their nets were full and they were blessed, and they shared a breakfast of fish and bread. If you remember, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, immediately following the Last Supper, Jesus predicts Peter's denial and says, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. And then later in Mark, in chapter 16, there's an account of the resurrection. The women go to the tomb, and they were told, go and tell Peter and the disciples that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Well, our lesson today is an epilogue of John's gospel that fulfills the words in Mark. Here we have a resurrection appearance of Jesus in Galilee over 70 miles north of Jerusalem, where the crucifixion took place. Jesus appears to Peter and to disciples after they've gone back to work. Isn't that just like Jesus to track us down and meet us where we are? This resurrection appearance is told in a boatload of contrast. On, on one side, it is nighttime, and in the darkness, there are empty nets. On the other side, it is daybreak, and the catch is so great, the nets are overflowing. On one side, the disciples are remembering the good old days when Jesus was with them, and they had said, we had hoped that he was the one to save Israel. And on the other side, the disciples all recognized Jesus and looked to a future with hope. On one side, Peter is trying to prove his worth after he denied Jesus three times. On the other side, Peter recognizes a new opportunity to express his love and willingness to serve by jumping into the water and swimming to his Lord. On one side, Jesus has been crucified, dead, and buried. On the other side, Jesus appears unexpectedly and gives new life. We've all been in that boat, haven't we? At some point, each of us has been caught between scarcity and abundance, between despair and hope, between the grave and a faith that will not die. As mature Christians, we have to acknowledge that much of life is bittersweet, We've had those experiences when we were down and were surprised by joy. And we've had those times when our joy was tempted by some unexpected setback. Like being excited about your daughter's wedding and discovering on the day of the rehearsal that she has run up a large credit card debt. Or going to meet your son at his high school graduation and learning that he had an accident that totaled the family car. Or saying a final goodbye to a loved one and having a new grandchild born is a sign of hope. Joy and sorrow can be close together, and Jesus is always close by in both of them. In our scripture, it's interesting to me that Jesus was on the shore calling out to the disciples in the boat, and yet they did not recognize him, but they still followed him. It's kind of like the walk to Emmaus in Luke's gospel, where Jesus is among the disciples, and they're so busy with their worries and their work that they do not recognize him. But when they listened to Jesus and they cast their nets on the right side of the boat, they made an overwhelming catch, so large that they were not able to haul it in, and yet their nets did not tear. You might say they had more than enough. When they recognized how much they had been blessed, they could face the realities before them. They could face the future when they counted their blessings. As the Christian saying goes, when the praises go up, the blessings come down, not in a magical way. It is when we remember the goodness of God and experience his power. That's why worship's important, because when we read scripture and repeat creeds and sing the hymns, it reminds us of what God has already done and gives us strength. Well, this morning, I want to tell you that faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
is more than just looking backwards. We have to anticipate the surprises God has in store for us in our abundance. Several years ago, a Sunday school class for children decided to make ceramic gifts during the Lenten season. They wanted to surprise their parents with a gift on Easter. It was a secret, of course. Each child selected a gift to make. There, there were crosses and Easter eggs, butterflies, and other symbols of the resurrections made in ceramics. Each week, they would work with their gift by molding and glazing and painting and waiting for the teacher to fire it and bring it back next week. And then finally, Easter Sunday came. The children were so excited, they carefully wrapped their gifts and wrote a card to express their love for their mother or father. Dear Mom, Happy Easter, love Kate. To Mom and Dad, Christ is risen. I love you, Billy. Can you imagine how excited they became when the class was over and the parents came to pick them up? One little boy was putting on his coat, waving goodbye, and picking up his gift at the same time, and he stumbled and let the gift fall out right in front of his mom and dad, and it made a loud crash on the floor. His parents looked, looked up at him, and he looked down at them, and they had tears in their eyes, and they began, the little boy began to sob, and his father, not knowing what to say, said, Son, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But the little boy's mother, who was more sensitive to what had happened, she knelt down and gathered the boy into her arms, and she said, Oh, but it does matter. It matters a great deal. And she wept with her son. To the father, the love between him and his son was secure, and they had expressed that love in the past, and one broken gift would not destroy it. But to the mother, who perhaps knew of the project and expected the joy her son would have in giving it to her, the gift was a new expression of that love. And each new expression of love must be looked for and cherished. In these days following Easter, we must look for and cherish new expressions of love in all of our relationships. For there is a lot more broken in our world than a ceramic gift. Political, racial, racial and economic divisions in our country and our church have broken us apart. As some people have lost their jobs and cannot afford food, medical care, and housing, others have benefited from a growing stock market. Racial disparities in access to health care, employment, and quality education discourage us and make us angry. Projected divisions in our church cause us to hold back commitments to mission and ministry at a time when the world needs the hope of Jesus Christ more than ever. And yet in the middle of this brokenness, we are called to serve out of our abundance, to put the pieces back together. Jesus needs people to cherish the work of reconciliation, justice, and peace, and weep when relationships are broken. Jesus needs people to represent his way of love and mercy and have hope that is not yet seen. Jesus needs people who can imagine a beloved community on earth as it is in heaven. Can you be one of those people? After the disciples came ashore, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus took the bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. Just like when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, for there was more than enough for everyone, more than enough. And Jesus will appear to you when you are broken and when you are blessed. Be ready to recognize the resurrected Christ in your life. Live with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have more than enough. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Bross. I'm the Aurora District Superintendent, soon to be the Prairie Central District Superintendent. And I want to thank the bishop uh, for his message, teaching us that uh, we can find God's grace and love and hope and peace in our abundance and in our brokenness. That's a difficult lesson for me, uh, probably is for many of you as well. I more easily find the joy of Christ when things are abundant, when things are big. Uh, I, I'm a big collector of shoes, and I remember a children's message one time when I, I brought all my shoes in, and I asked the children to uh, come forward and, and, and go behind the stage and grab a pair of shoes and bring them out and lay them in front of uh, the, uh, the altar. And, and um, we had a big wraparound stage, and they f it filled the entire front. It was embarrassing, to be honest, uh, because I had a lot of shoes. I, I love shoes, and I find such joy in them. But I realized right then and there that uh, 
I sometimes was relying too much on my abundance for my self-worth, my happiness, my joy. Um, and I needed to understand that God is bigger than just the things I have and the abundance I have. That was a good life lesson for me, even though I'd preached that kind of sermon many times myself. I don't always live it. My father is a uh, pastor and uh, a retired clergy from the Wisconsin Annual Conference, and he received an award in 1995 for his special leadership for the conference that year. And uh, he uh, uh, told me about what he did with this award. It came like this, but you notice it's not um, framed anymore, no, no glass in front. Uh, the reason being, he saw some um, hardware on it he liked, he wanted to use it for a project, so he took the, the award apart. See, my dad was never one to like awards and things like that. He um, found the uh, um, other things of ministry uh, to be more important to him, and that was really relationship and people. But the quote on here that when he was taken apart, he saw and he told me about that meant so much to him was it's a uh, message from, or a quote from Bishop Tutu. A person is a person through other persons. A person is a person through other persons. And to me, I think that's where I can marry the two understandings of the joy in my generosity and, or in my abundance and the times of, of generosity and love and all, all the good parts of my life and, and the joy in the difficulty. I can come up to understand that uh, because of people, I'm able to see the joy of Christ in all of those settings. Oh, and I have a lot of things I can share with people and we're laughing and we're being generous to one another. That's great joy. There's great joy in gift receiving, gift giving, even some things, and that's okay. And I find joy in that. And I, I see where God has blessed me with many things. But I also see the joy in our most difficult times, and that usually is because of other people. Recently, this uh, past week, in fact, a uh, pastor in our district passed away way too early. Our district lay leader was suddenly killed in an accident. And I was very sad. And yet, through people, I came witness to the lives of these two people. I saw glimpses of the abundance of their generosity towards others. And through people, I witnessed the love of Christ, even in this time of, of deep tragedy and pain person is a person through persons. Through persons, we become people who can understand joy in our abundance and in our most difficult times. I had to be kind of shamed in front of my congregation because of my shoes to understand it's not all about abundance. And I had to sit in a funeral and talk to many people who were very sad and crushed this past week to understand more deeply how God is alive and well, even in my grief. So thank you, Bishop, for teaching us that message. It's real for me. I hope during this time you can come to understand that. So the joy of Christ is alive in you no matter what. Friends, offering it's a way to demonstrate our gratitude to God for all his blessings that are new every morning. Our offering empowers the ministries and missions of our churches and community. Many ministries are going on thanks to how the United Methodist Church people live and give connectionally. I invite you now to give generously to your church as we worship God through our tithe, gifts, and offerings. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we continue to hold on to the celebration and triumph of Easter. As we look back over the past year, we realize that many of us can identify with Thomas doubt. Can we be the church, the body of Christ, when we can't see the body gathered in our sanctuary? Yet, Christ has opened our eyes to his risen body that can't be confined by walls and is not diminished 
by precautions and social distance. As we make our gift to you, we affirm the resurrection power that we have seen. And so we say again, Alleluia. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, this is Brandon Bott, and this is the first Indigenous Peoples Day. And this is Come All Your People, Take Three. Spirit, come all ye people, come and praise the Lord. Come all ye people, praise the Holy Spirit, come now and praise the Lord. Come now, my brother, come and praise Christ Jesus. Come now, my sister, come and praise the Lord. Come now, my brother, come and praise Christ Jesus. Come now and praise the Lord. Ling on who saidest, a love on Jesus Christ. Ling on who saidest, a love on Jesus Christ. Ling on who saidest, a love on Jesus Christ. Ling on then glory at Amen. We're now at the point in our service where we will offer prayers of the people. This, of course, is always a, a very powerful time when we're in person, but we need not let the distance um, keep us from the power of God. Um, I invite you to use a um, method of communication to your prayer team so that they can be in prayer with you. Maybe it's uh, you text them, maybe you write in the comment section of the Facebook or YouTube or Zoom, um, but let us uh, share our prayers with the community, knowing that um, God is is with us as we do this. Uh, we might be today praying for someone who is sick or at the end of their life. We might be praying for families who are waiting and expecting new life. We might be praying for those who are hopeless or feeling um, that they need help. We might be praying for those who have been taking care of uh, communities as healthcare workers, as frontline workers, all of these people um, we lift up in prayer. And so let us 
God's scattered people gather together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and ever loving God, open our hearts to your presence that is always flowing in and among and around and within us. Stir within us a desire to follow you, not just in words, but in acts of love and care. For those who need comfort, God, may your grace infuse them and fill them with peace and assurance in your love. For those who are blind to the needs of the world, God, may your grace disturb them that they might rise up to participate in works of compassion and justice. We offer these prayers in the name of the risen Christ who gifts us and clothes us and sets us free for the journey. We offer this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that we have heard the preached word from our bishop and sung songs of glory, now that we understand God's calling upon us during this time, let us go forth from this place to be the gospel that others may see and hear and believe in. Amen. Amen.